about to talk about the movie. There's a lot of singing in a Goofy movie. Yeah. Was this one of the first features where you were recording songs? Uh, features, yes. Um, a matter of fact, the songs that we recorded, at least the songs that I did, uh, The Open Road and Nobody Else But You, we did on day number one. Really? And so that was the first thing recorded in the whole movie. And uh, it was uh, actually, it's, uh, one of Jason's friends got to do the honors, unfortunately, in that, that movie, even though yes. Jason, uh, they didn't know you could sing, I think. So. No, I went in, they had, I had booked the role. And then they said, okay, we want you to come in and uh, you have the role, no matter what, but we want you to audition to sing. Yeah. And I tried my darndest, and, uh, and they, you know, it, it, Matthew Broderick can sing really great. They had someone else to do his singing voice for Lion King. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, they, they cast my pal Aaron Lohr, and it's funny, I saw him at a, like a commercial audition. I'm like, Aaron, what's going on? What are you doing? He's like, oh, I just booked this movie. Uh, I'm singing for this kid who obviously can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't say anything, and he no. called me like two days later. He's like, why didn't you tell me that was you? I feel like an idiot. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, we got to rectify that at the D23 uh, convention yeah. a couple of years ago where you did sing, and we got to sing live, yep. uh, you know, uh, open road, and that's, that's the way it should be. But, uh, oh, yeah, the songs were actually the first thing we recorded. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. How has your guys' relationship been since a recording for a Goofy movie? Oh, gosh, he's like my second son. I mean, he's a good friend with my son, Austin, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. is... Uh, yeah, and they're both uh, drummers. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a drummer now, yes. and Austin, my son, is a drummer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to say, during the opening of the uh, Goofy movie, I went to a screening on the Disney lot, and it was very tense for me because I'm sitting here, like Michael Eisner's right here, and Jeffrey Katzenberg watching a kind of halfway done version of it. And I'm thinking, God, I hope these guys like it and everything. <laughs> and my son was with me, and when we were uh, leaving, uh, I noticed my son was crying. And I said, well, what's the matter, Austin? Didn't you like the movie? And he said, well, when Goofy goes over the waterfall, I thought that was you. <laughs> so he's been screwed up ever since. Because <laughs> He didn't, people would say, you know, is Max your brother? Are you Goofy's son? I don't think I have a brother. And he's still messed up. <laughs> I always tell everybody, I love me some Billy. I love Billy. I love you, Bill Farmer. I Thank love you. you. Uh, yeah, we've traveled together. We've, we've hung out, uh, dinner at each other's houses. Oh, yeah. Uh, always, I always get excited when I hang out with Billy. And it is. It's like uh, it's like my second son. So it really was, and uh, it's a delight to get to work. A lot of people ask how we record these kind of movies, and some of the times I was in there by myself, as I remember, doing lines. Just and other times we would do scenes together mm -hmm. and record them together. And which ones they finally wound up using, I don't know. But it was always a delight, and you always get more of a kick when you're working with the other actors because you get the energy off of them and you react with them, other than just doing it in your mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an interesting. Interesting recording uh, uh, period over a long period, but uh, over almost yeah. a year. I think longer than that. I think we started in two, uh, 1993, Maybe. about two years or a year and a half to okay. two years yeah. Yeah. it took in recording that because they do scenes and then they would scrap those scenes and rewrite them and re record them. So it was a long, involved process. Really? That's yeah. very cool. Well, our question line over here is about a mile long at this point. Let's uh, uh Jason and Jason Hello, right Jason. here. We have oh, okay. Oh, yeah, Jason. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Mr. Voorhees. Yeah. <laughs> Come on down. Come on. All right, what's your name? Hey, my name is Uriel Elizondo and uh my question is how long did it take to make the movie? Okay, how long did it take? And I can probably say, from what I remember, there was I first series that I did was called Goof Troop, and at the time, yeah, whoosh, a little noise for Goof thanks. Troop. Uh, you remember it, huh? <laughs> yep. um, when we did a Goof Troop, they did Ducktales, and they did a Ducktales movie. So the logical thing was they would do a Goof Troop movie. So what we did uh, was we actually had a script, a Goof Troop movie. And we had the entire cast uh, of Goof Troop set in the same kind of Spoonerville area that the uh, series was. And it just didn't seem to jive that much. It was a lot nice, but it wasn't great. And I believe it was Jeffrey Katzenberg that wanted to make it a buddy-buddy picture with Max and Goofy. And so then 
I remember we finally, you know, and this takes kind of a long time when they rewrite stuff. Okay, now it's a buddy-buddy picture, and it's called a goofy movie. And we go in to record, and uh, like I say, we did the, the first day we did the recording of the songs. And then it's like, uh, you know, a few weeks later, we go in and start recording on stage B at Disney on the lot. And uh, you start recording, and... Um, then, you know, it might be a week or two or even a month or two, and we'd go back and do a different thing, or they, then they would, like, cancel that scene, and then you'd rewrite it and redo it. But I remember going in so many different times to record. It was uh, in about every convoluted way that you can record, ensemble, by yourself. And uh, so it took about, yeah, about two, two and a half years to get it done that plus, I remember. Plus animation takes time to draw all those pictures. So, short answer, long time. <laughs> you pleased? Please don't kill anybody. Yeah, he's got that ax with him. <laughs> all right, well, so okay. you're next up You here. have vengeance, I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, y'all. What's hey. happening? What's going on? Uh, loved the movie since I was a kid, and I've always wanted to ask you if you guys ever done the perfect cast yourselves. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've gone fishing a couple. I don't do the perfect cast. <laughs> Ten o'clock, two o'clock, quarter to three, two or day. I'm a little teapot and let her fly. As, as close as I can remember it. But <laughs> I probably had to do that about 50 times to do, you know, do it in the movie. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm by myself at home, after a couple of drinks, yeah. house is all to myself. I'll try it. <laughs> uh, like you don't either. It's yeah, not it. around people in not front of a camera. No, no, no way. Do you do it? Can you do it? Not yet. Not yet? Yeah. Someday, hopefully. Someday? Yeah. Someone told me that at my table yesterday, I got the first two parts. It was like, it's this, this, and then this. And that's all I got. <laughs> so I'm working on I went around. Next year. I'd snap a hip if I did that. <laughs> Next con, he'll, he'll know it for sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. So, hi there. My name is Logan. Hey, Logan. Uh, my question is, so Goofy and Max, you know, the characters in the Goof Troop show and even, like, in the beginning parts of the movie, they're usually very jovial, very silly, you know, goofy, and I was wondering what was that like to get into the heads of the characters when you're doing these more serious, more tense scenes, like, you know, after the, the motel scene on that quiet drive home, and like, what was that like to have these more, like, serious moments? Yeah, uh, well, for me, it was a big change, because up to that point, I had done just kind of one note where he's happy, go lucky, the typical goofy you see in the cartoons. And then they added all these layers of emotion that he had to be worried about uh, Max getting arrested and getting in trouble, being a delinquent, and being his, uh, his feelings are hurt by uh, Max, and he's disappointed in Max lying to him. It was difficult, and it took a long time to kind of get how you stay within the realm, a goofy spectrum of emotions and add those on without it not sounding like goofy. So it took a lot of recording on that. And generally, it was just doing it over and over and over again. Um, a lot of times you do a line maybe 20, 30 times, depending on the director. For example, the, uh, the line where I, I said, uh, you know, how many cups of sugar does it take to get to the moon? Yes. <laughs> I probably did that 30, 40 times. And uh, I, I think, that. They, yeah, it took a long time. What am I not doing right? I don't know. Oh, we'll get it when, and finally they hit on one that just sounded perfect. But unlike a cartoon series like Goof Troop, where we had uh, maybe a 30, 40 page script, and we would go in and record that in like three hours. And it was just boom. Everybody was in the studio at the same time recording like a radio play from page one to the end. A movie, they had a lot more money, a lot more time to get it right. So they did it in little pieces. And they also had the time to do each line as many times as they wanted until they got the exact read that they want for that emotional, you know, the, the scene. Uh, and so, yeah, that's probably the biggest difference between the Goof Troop and the movie was the fact they had a big budget and we had a lot more time to do it right. And that inc included us doing scenes over and over and over again. Well, and, and you know, to your credit, 
and uh, you know, for those who are interested in voiceover, you know, it, there is, it's not just it's not just your voice, there is acting involved. And people say like, oh, I do a great impression of Homer Simpson at work, my guys at work say I should do voiceover. I'm like, there's more to it than that. And just because Bill, you know, can voice Goofy, you know, he's also a great performer. And it's not like you were doing the lines over and over again because you weren't getting it right. It's because that you're a great actor and you're able to take that direction. And then I give you so much credit for that. My favorite scene is, if people ask what's your favorite scene in the movie, and I'm like, it's Goofy and Pete in the hot tub, which sounds really? weird. <laughs> But when you guys are just having this, like, this dad-to-dad -dad conversation, and it wasn't, like, this over-the-top goofy, it was just real dad, like, it's so filled with, with conflict. I'm like, nobody else could do that but Billy. Oh, thanks. Thank you. That, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, and I'll, hopefully that answered that, that question. I'm, I forgot what the question was, but... <laughs> well, I forget a lot of stuff. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, next up... Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. That's okay. Just hold the mic. There you go. Uh, so, uh, What's your name? My name's Dana. Hi, Dana. Hi, Dana. Hi, Dana. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I actually saw you in Denver. A year I remember ago. you, Dana. You do? Yes. Wow, thank I you. I do. I was like, your face looks familiar. You have an animated voice, too. I love that. It's way up here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, I've been hearing you guys in all facets of things since I was a little person, and so it's really nice to see you in person, and I just wanted to know how you guys got into the acting world. Okay, do you want to start sure. on that? Sure. I, yeah. I, uh, I started when I was 12, I from originally from Rhode Island, and my parents... Had, my dad had a gig teaching ballet at Fullerton College, so we drove cross-country to do that gig, and we're in, you know, we're now we're near Hollywood, we're, you know, Fullerton's close enough, and everyone's uh, meeting me and talking to my parents, saying, oh, your son's cute, you should get him into acting. And my parents went, cha-ching, that's a great idea. <laughs> Man, what a great idea, pay for gas. Make some money get on a little kid, okay. Get, get, get some commercials going. So I took a workshop in Irvine, California, they sent me to an agent, after 12 weeks, agents started immediately sending me out for, for things. And uh, I mean, this is like late 80s, there was like, little to no diversity in television. You know, it's all like white dudes, blonde, brunette, that's it. And I was, I fit that mold. So I got a lot of opportunities. I was very, very fortunate. And uh, one thing led to another, and, and here I am sitting before you. Yeah, and I, um, I, was, I grew up in South Central Kansas, so there was no outlet for anything artistic or acting, and uh, except for like plays in high school that I, I, I loved doing, but that was it. And the closest thing I thought of ever getting to Hollywood was radio. So I, uh, my degree was in broadcast journalism. I kicked around in radio for a number of years and radio stations. And I used to do impressions all the time of, uh, of uh, cartoon characters and, you know, movie stars and stuff like that. So I kind of worked on my announcer voice and I started doing those kind of announcers, you know. And then I, on the air, I would develop characters. And I would, uh, you know, like bring in guest DJs that weren't me. I do like Wolfman Jag. Oh, baby, we're on the Bill Farmer show here. We're going to be having a great time right now. Hey, Wolfman, how's it going? As we're going to be spinning some sacks of wax from dust till dawn right here on the Bill Farmer show. And I did all of this really crappy stuff. <laughs> um, and, but it was a fun place. You need a place to be bad first because you're never going to start out as an actor great. You need a place to really suck and people, you know, you can just, uh, and that radio station didn't care. They'd just say, well, play a few 45s, do the commercials, and you do whatever else you want to do. You know, so they didn't care. But it was great training for me. And then I got into stand-up comedy in uh, 1982 back in Dallas at a comedy club. And that was the best training I ever had. Uh, and I thought, well, maybe I, I should try stand-up, which if you can do stand-up, you can do just about anything. And I started with uh, a lot of great comedians uh, that I got to see develop before they were famous, Tim Allen, uh, Bill Ingvall was our house comic at the club I started. I saw Jay Leno before he got big, Roseanne Barr, all of these people. I watched how they, you know, performed in front of an audience, and I learned over a period of years on how to tell a joke, how to say a line, how to get the most out of a line, which was great training for voiceover. 
Then on, in 86, 1986, my agent in Dallas said, well, you know, you do all these voices, you got to go out to Hollywood and give it a shot. So I got an apartment in L.A., and about five months later, my agent just luckily just said, do you do any of the Disney characters? And I said, well, I can kind of do a pretty good goofy and stuff. So I got a cassette of the original voice, Pinto Colvig, tried to do his voice, and over a weekend... Um, I, you know, laid it down in the office, and about a month later, they said, oh, they'd like to use you. Now, they don't sign you up, you are now the voice of Goofy forever. No, it's one shot. You never know if you're going to do another one. You don't know if they're going to like you or whatever. So I wasn't that, I, I thought it was cool. I love Goofy, but I didn't think it was going to be like a long career. And uh, I got in, I did a, a, a line of dialogue out of an old cartoon, and um, uh, you know, I got through it, and I said, hey, that was pretty cool. And then they called me back, uh, like, a next month, and then a few weeks after that, more and more. And then in about 1990, I found out about Goof Troop, so I had a series. And from then on, now I've done about 3,500 jobs for Disney over the last 30 years. So, And they're still hiring me, so, you know, I've been very fortunate. And the Disney characters, unlike any other characters in the world, uh, they're the oldest characters. First of all, Mickey started in 1928, and Steamboat Willie in 1930 or whatever it was. I think it was 28. 28. Um, so, and he's still on TV every day. And there's no other characters like that. So I really got very lucky with this particular character. That, uh, uh, and the fact he was my favorite as a kid didn't hurt any. So I kind of got my dream job. And that's how I got here. That's awesome. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Good to see you again. So I was going to ask Mars, what was the transition like from kind of commercials and acting into voice acting for you? I mean, it was no different, really. I was—I didn't know any better. I was so young. It just it was another facet to play, which is all it was to me, playing pretend. Yeah. So whether on camera or in front of a microphone, um, I know maybe ignorance. I don't know. Ignorance is bliss, but uh, yeah, it was—it yeah. was not. It was not a difficult transition for me. Do you remember what your first voice acting job was? I do. It was uh, Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears. Yeah. I voiced the boy Kevin, who was friends with the Gummy Bears. Uh, you, have you heard of this cartoon? You're nodding like, yeah, I bet you haven't. Not, no. no. Back, back so in my young. day, we watched cartoons one day a week. It was on Saturday mornings. <laughs> and the, and the, the only reason I booked that job is because there was a boy, I was the second Kevin. The first Kevin went through puberty. He didn't sound like a little boy anymore. Yeah. No. He was way up here, and then he was like this and lost a job. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's your name? Kaden, what's happening? Good to see you again. That's all right. Take your time. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, man. You're fine. Sure. No worries, man. Sorry. Right. You are awesome. You're awesome. Thanks. <laughs> okay, what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is, what was your, you know, your best moments in both Goofy Movie and an Extreme Goofy Movie? Oh, my gosh. The uh, best movement, uh, okay, best, best moments. Best, and best moment, moment, best moment, yeah. Oh, best, <laughs> best moment. Best moment, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, gosh, the best, probably at the premiere. The first time I got to see a Goofy movie with an audience, which was at a theater in Westwood, which is part of Los Angeles, that was just mind-blowing to see your work up on a screen with people enjoying what you did. You get to see that. Whereas normally in a studio, you just do the lines, you go home, and it takes so long to animate. Anyway, you do a cartoon, it takes like a year, or sometimes a year and a half before you ever see it on TV. And you're seeing it alone, so you don't know how people are reacting. When you see a movie and your characters are way up there, that's kind of like a dream come true. That was my high point. Uh, for me, in a, in a goofy movie was just soaking in, like being in, first off, when we recorded, you don't usually record a lot of cartoons. It's this, it's this giant sound stage, about almost as big as this room. It's where they mix all the feature films, all of them. Yeah. And if you look at every Disney film, live action, and animated, you'll see uh, dialogue editor Doc Kane, who's an yeah. Academy Award winner. I mean, that's his room, okay? So 
in this great room, working with Bill, who I'd, I'd only met like a couple of times before, really soaking it in like, oh man, I'm like, because I was a Disney nut at the time, like, oh, I'm really like in part of Disney history now, and I'm part of this extreme thing. Uh, that was that for an extremely goofy movie. It's hard because I didn't, it, it, it was so quick, and I didn't work with you at all. It was just me. Um, I, I guess for me it was the premiere of yeah. Extremely because I didn't get to go to the premiere of the oh, first really? one. No. Well, you don't remember that I wasn't there? I, 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 I was. I don't remember who was there. I, <laughs> I just remember me? seeing the movie. Yeah. They, I didn't know how they did. That would have been my first premiere, so that I would have uh, not remembered anything about that. <laughs> but yeah, going to see it on the big screen and, and sharing the celebration with everybody was pretty cool. You happy with that? Thanks, man. Oh, well, right, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you. Oh, well, thank you. come to Ohio next weekend. That's where we'll be. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be next. Yeah. <laughs> High five us real quick. Gosh. There you go. <laughs> Sweet. Come on up, man. Hello. How's it going? Hello. Uh, <laughs> You're interrogating what? us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your name, man? Jay. Jay. Uh, working with Disney, how's it changed over the years for so long? Working with Disney for so long, sorry. <laughs> what, how's it changed over the years? Uh, the recording, uh, the way we record has changed just because of technology. In a uh, goof troop, we recorded on 24, you know, 24 track tape. And so that's, you know, like on a tape recorder. And when we did our lines, we did like scene by scene, like a little radio play. And if anyone messed up their line, we had to start over and we did the whole scene from the beginning. So we got it all in one, one pass. And then they'd do pickups and maybe interject them later on. But you basically did it a, a scene at a time. Whereas uh, later on, and now especially, it's all done on computers, I never really uh, work with the other actors. I go in and, Bill, you're at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. You go in and do this cartoon, and I have all my lines there. And sometimes if I'm the first in the, in the booth on that cartoon, I don't have anyone to listen to. There's no playback or anything. I just have to imagine that Mickey's saying, you know, gosh, uh, gosh, uh, uh, Goofy, let's go outside. And Come on, Mick, let's go. And so I have to do that in my head. Whereas... If one of the other actors comes in first and I need, I'll say, can you play back what they did and then I can react to it. That's, that's uh, kind of the way it is now. But it's just a little by yourself. And I don't like that as much because it's much more fun to get the energy off of the other actors. But uh, that's kind of the way it is now. That's changed. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of uh, other ways <laughs> that it has changed. I can think of many. <laughs> but I like to work for the company a little longer. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'll just cut, you know, ditto what, what Bill said. It, it, I remember being a lot of group reads, which is a lot of fun, and then it, it got down to like, you know, one person at a time, and, and I would ask, like, why? And they're like, oh, just scheduling, and, and I did also did a lot of stuff for Warner Brothers, and yeah. they always had a big cast, even with yeah. celebrities. So I don't know, uh, you know, it, it, different structural stuff, a lot of micromanaging, a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Um, uh, and I, I should just, I should stop. I should stop. <laughs> I should stop. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll talk afterwards. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's an interesting industry. It's a very difficult, probably the hardest part about uh, voice acting is, you know, you're auditioning. I'm still auditioning maybe a hundred auditions for every new role that mm -hmm. I get yeah. Yeah. in addition to Goofy. Uh, so that doesn't really count a lot. They know I do that, but can I do this other character? So I still audition all the time. I have, now I can audition from wherever. I have my computer now and I got a little microphone with me and stuff I can audition from here and uh, then I oh you booked that and you go back to Los Angeles and you can record it it's much more flexible in that regard so in the old days I had to kind of be staying around LA a lot because what if they call tomorrow and I'm not available that actually why I didn't do stand-up after I started doing goofy is because I'd be doing a, a club in Seattle 
and Disney would call, and they'd say, they need you tomorrow uh, to do Goofy. And I'd say, well, I'm in Seattle until Monday. Can we do it next week? Well, if you can't be available, we'll have to get someone else. And I said, I'll quit. I'll stay around. <laughs> so for the first about 20 years, I was yeah. kind of pretty married to uh, Los Angeles, kind of st waiting by the phone and waiting for them to call and uh, going into the studio. So that's definitely different. Yeah. Sure. Right, thank thank you. you so much. Hello. Howdy. Uh, mic check, mic check. Uh, siblings. Just siblings. get a little closer. A little bit. Yeah. Check, check. There you go. You got to kind of eat the gotta microphone. Really get down there. <laughs> there you also go. makes you sound very nice when you have that deep voice. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, to piggyback off an earlier question, uh, you talked about uh, some of the more serious moments of Goofy movie. I guess my question is, uh, for the more father-son bonding moments, and the uh, moments uh, where was Goofy and Max having to bounce off each other for those father-son moments, uh, did you have any, were there like any personal experience, or was there any, uh, was there any, uh, how much of your personal life, I'm trying to think of the best way to ask this question, <laughs> um, like, hmm, like what, did you have any moments to, or, ah, you're good. Personal yeah. experience, I guess personal experience. Did, how much of the personal experiences help you out with those moments of uh, oh. between Max and Goofy? Like how much did personal uh, experiences help? With I mean, yeah. so, or at least those moments of your, those moments of your life with like you and your son or with you oh. and your uh, well, my son was born in 1989, so he's about five years old when the movie came out. And I was using him as a reference in my head when I was talking to Max. So I was thinking what I would say to my son when he was older, as old as uh, Max was in the movie. And uh, so that was, uh, you know, kind of where the emotional place I went to. I could say that actually it was a difficult uh, record in many ways, and there were a lot of changes that went through that movie, which I didn't like, for example. For example, uh, I, we went through a period there, and I don't know why this happened, but Jeffrey Katzenberg decided that I sounded too cartoony. Mm -hmm. We had been recording oh, yeah. about uh, a week or two, and they came to me and they said, well, Bill, they think that, Jeffrey thinks you sound too cartoony. I'm saying, what do you mean? <laughs> and, you know, they don't want me to go, horse, howdy, you know. He said, no, do your own voice. And I'm thinking, what? Because that's not goofy. Uh, if you go to a goofy movie, aren't you going to want to hear goofy? And, okay, um, and I know now what they were trying to get at, but it didn't come across that way. So I actually recorded better part of a week yeah, in that. my yeah. voice. Mm -hmm. Hi, Max, how you doing? And I'm thinking, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> no one, because they, they love the way, they wanted my voice to kind of match the style that Jason was doing with his voice so it sounded more real. Jeffrey just likes real characters. And that went on for a little while until they actually, and as I understand it, they had a, uh, an Oscar presentation where they had an animated Snow White giving an award with Rob Lowe. And they had had the traditional Snow White, originally animated and voiced. And he said, no, I want a 90s Snow White, I want to update her. Well, it got so much hate mail because you wouldn't have known it was uh, even Snow White that Michael Eisner and Roy Disney found out what was going on our set and they said, no, let Goofy be Goofy. So I had to re-record the movie, all the lines that I had done up to that time, in Goofy's voice. And they even did that to Jim Cummings. They felt that he sounded too cartoony as Pete. Mm -hmm. So they brought in, I think, Earl Bowen, Earl Bowen and yeah, a couple of other guys yeah. to record the Pete lines in a more real-sounding mm -hmm. voice. And then, no, around the barn we went. So to... To give you an idea how long it took to do that movie, it was like around the barn, we came back to where we were, and it turned out to be a great movie, a very great movie. But an extremely goofy movie it took us probably like three or four days to do the principal recording, a few days of pickups, and that was it. A goofy movie, I think I did about 40 days of recording on that over about a two-year period. So they were trying to work out things, but they eventually, it all led back to the way it it worked out, and I'm uh, luckily, you know, I guess the proof is in the pudding because the 
you know, the movie turned out great, and you guys still love it after all We're these many years. We're here because of you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, but we, I did go through hell <laughs> for for a while emotionally, thinking, why well, they don't want Goofy? What is the deal? You know. So, you know, that was kind of a, a strange thing about that movie. Uh, but once they got back on track, it flowed really nicely. And uh, then I was able to do Goofy and add those layers. Maybe they're just trying to get me to bring out those more personal layers in Goofy and strike a new kind of tone with the character that we were able to finally achieve after all of that grief. <laughs> the inside story the behind a Goofy movie. <laughs> It was challenging for me because Max was such a, and I'll just say it, we're all thinking it, he was a, he was dead. He was not nice, not enough, sorry kids, but don't treat your parents like that. I mean, because, you know, they kept pushing Max, you know, to be more combative and, which I understood and it really worked with, with the balance of it. But it was, it was hard because, you know, I, I understood even Jason as an actor, like, you know, Goofy's just being goofy, you know, he's just, he, He's being him, his authentic self, and I get how that's embarrassing for a teenager. I'm sure my son, who's over there, will soon realize I'm not as cool as he thinks I am. Uh, but uh, it, it was difficult to be mean to such an endearing, lovable character, you know? And but, again, they probably had to temper that over the recording yeah. oh, to yeah. make him always too mean, back yep. him off, yep. and you got to find the tone, and that takes time to really yeah. do. You You're betcha. welcome. Thank you so much. A great question, actually. Yeah. I don't know if you two already answered this question, but when you were recording for a goofy movie and an extremely goofy movie, were you together in one room doing? Have it you as an been ensemble? here this entire? Because <laughs> I thought you yeah, were up I here just first. To clarify, we are, okay. and then we sure. came up, and then someone. Sometimes, yeah, several days we were, and we recorded a lot of the scenes together, back and forth, and then there were other days where I do the same lines by myself. And which ones they used, I don't really know. Uh, but I guess they were trying to get a different read or whatever, you know. But uh, they were trying all sorts of different things during that movie. <laughs> what's your name, man? Hey, how you doing? My name is Alex. Alex, what's happening? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So, um, what was it like of working and recording on the songs for the Goofy movie? They, as I, yeah. Take this oh, okay. Off. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, well, as I say, that was day number one. And uh, what they do, they give you a temp track of the song. They go, do you need a break from modern live on? And I had to go over it, tape recorder at home, getting the song down and everything. Then I went in, I met Aaron Lohr, and I didn't even know we were going to be recording together, and so we were just at two microphones. Sometimes you do it alone and they mix it in, or sometimes you do it together. But uh, it only took uh, a couple of hours to really record both songs. It really wasn't a long session, as was I remember. Was it still to a track, or did you guys work with an orchestra? No, we did it to a track. Oh, I was it was already that. mixed track and we just laid in the, the voices and everything. And uh, it again was a terrifying because it was the first movie that any of the Fab Five had starred in, you know, as a title character. So I felt a lot of weight kind of on my shoulders to make this as good as I can. And, um, and Aaron, a great singer, and Goofy, you know, Goofy sings, but it's Goofy. So I, I, that made me feel a little bit better because you don't expect Goofy to be a great singer. So that made it a little bit easier. But uh, so it was just one day, uh, two track, and just kind of sing it a few times. And a couple of hours, we had the songs. So um, on the song called On the Open Road, like how long did it like took you to complete it? As I say, uh, just recording my part of it, and they added all the other singers later on, uh, my part of it was just about an hour, hour and a half, couple of hours. So, and what about the other songs? About the same. We did it all in the same day as I remember. So we just did one song, then we did the other. But the whole session was probably a couple of hours long. It wasn't that long. Thank you. Oh, Thanks, you're Alex. welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Step right on up. Hi. My name's Caleb. Hey, Caleb. Uh, my question is, like, with the live action trend going on, how do you guys feel about that? And if Goofy Movie was to get a, a live action. <laughs> Wouldn't that be who, crazy? Who would play Goofy? That'd be a good one, you know. Or would he just be like a 3D yeah. animated anthropomorphic looking dog? I know. I've been waiting <laughs> to get a call and say, yeah, we're going to do Who knows? Yeah. Um, 
there's Nicholas Cage. You know, if they do it well, (laughs) right? (laughs) It would have. And that's another thing that just reminded me when they first were talking about a goofy movie, they had actually. Uh, thought of doing a celebrity doing Goofy's voice, Mm -hmm. which also kind of, what do you mean? And they were talking, they actually talked, as I understand, I don't know if they recorded or not, but I heard they talked to Steve Steve Martin Martin, and uh, Jim Varney, and uh, it would be a couple of ideas. And then they think, no, and Roy Disney was was so great. He loved the Disney legacy and kept Disney Disney. And he was really the one that said, no, these are the characters. Use these characters. This is what the public knows and loves. Don't screw it up, you know. And he was the one that really kind of oversaw all that and had the Disney legacy in mind. So, yeah, that, um, um, that I'm trying to remember what the original question was. Do you, I do you, have you seen yeah. the, the new live action? Oh, yeah. Oh, do, oh, yeah. Th- they got Dumbo th- coming out and they've got uh, Aladdin coming. And what I do don't you think know. about it? Um, Did you see? I have seen The Jungle Book. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I think on a lot of these movies is why. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's wonderful, and I love, I did love Beauty and the Beast. I love Beauty and the Beast. It was a uh... different take, but still, I think maybe a new story would have been. You know, I know they're trying to go safe with a story that people know, Mm -hmm. but I like new stories that I haven't Mm -hmm. seen before. And also, if you're going to remake a classic, it's really tough to do it well because the bar's set so high. It's like Gone with the Wind 2. You know, it's not going to be that good. It's it's going to be it's tough to match the original, so it's very risky, I think. I like Cinderella, I like Jungle yeah. Book. Um, Beauty and the Beast was all right. I like I just love the songs. I don't know, I didn't like yeah. the new songs. I don't know why they had to write new songs. There's songs in the Broadway production they could have used. I, uh, Human yeah. Again is one of my favorites. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Lion King, I don't know. I, I know a lot of my animator friends, they saw the new trailer for it and they're like, "Oh, well, we already did that." We did the same, we just did that. <laughs> why why are you doing the same thing? Um, I don't know. It, I, it, I, I, I think I know why they're doing it because of money. Yeah, but it, it no. If they do it and it captures something different, sure. Um, maybe a, I don't know. Maybe a sequel would have been a better idea. A Lion King sequel or something. That, uh, but maybe it is different <laughs> enough with live action. I don't know. You know, it says. But they, I think they could come up with new stories. <laughs> I remember. I remember, and uh, when like the straight to DVD thing was going on, uh, I was. I thought oh, in my brain, yeah. I was like, the next stage has got to be like live action remakes of like I would. I would. The, the fascination of seeing that live action. Yeah. There's there's that as well. So I'm open to anything, Caleb. Yeah. Thank what you. do you think? Uh, I love. It. I'm a big do you fan. see right yeah. there? You're excited you know, for it. <laughs> You yeah. bet. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Can you imagine like Lion King two and a half, but live action? <laughs> like, like that would yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, that's a great question. The more I think about it, I guess if it works and if it's well done, it's worth doing, okay. no matter what the story is. Because I think no film is worse than even a bad film. I just love film. So, you know, I can, yeah. I can but, but I wonder why sometimes. I think I it's think just a fascin- fascination of us wanting to see everything in real life. We're like, oh, yeah, let's sure. do all this in real life. Let's see how it is. But, if you know, that saying, if it isn't broke, don't yeah. fix it. So. And that's also the charm of animation because you can do stuff that you don't do in real life. Yeah, exactly. And I love the art. I especially love 2D animation. Mm-hmm. I just love the way it looks, the f- way it feels. There's a fluidity in it that is just neat. Yeah. And it, it's tough to capture that with uh, CGI at this point in technology. Um, it's like monsters. You know, I loved old Ray Harryhausen monsters, oh, yeah. stop motion. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. came across a lot better than a lot of the CGI things later on. It looked too sterile or something like that. Yeah. But uh, that's me. It's just a, a personal choice, I guess. I think we all agree. <laughs> mm-hmm. How you doing? Hello. I've seen you, but who's your favorite possum? Yours, <laughs> Lester's Possum Bork. Hi, what's your name? My name's Michaela, and my question is, uh, this movie has affected, like, a whole generation, and uh, it's like a whole fandom itself with new merch and stuff coming out, so after all these years later, how has it affected you guys with it being such a huge hit still? Cha-ching! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well... Those royalty checks are... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I gotta say, I just think it's amazing, and I was blown away at the D23, mm-hmm. where we had, like, you know, 1,500 people was jammed in there. Is there and, y'all know what he's talking about? 
You were there. Well, you were there. Oh my God. We had a we had an, an arranged by uh, Bill's wife Jen, in mm-hmm. the front row here, uh, a, a reunion panel at the D23 with uh, most of the cast and crew, and uh, Tevin Campbell came out and did a, like a, an actual Powerline concert happened. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and it was like oh I, I couldn't believe it. Um, as I understand it, there were a couple of blogs, Disney blogs, and they said the top ten panels to see at D23, and ours wasn't even listed on the top 10, Aww. but we got number one as far 100% from the audience people that were there. We beat out the Star Wars panel and they had George Lucas and Harrison Ford. So I was really just blown away. And the reaction, we got like a two and a half minute standing ovation at the end. Felt like one of the Beatles, you know? It yes. was like amazing, <laughs> amazing. It's great, you know, it, it, you work on something like, th- like, there is an element to our job. It's like, you know, like you were saying, like I, we're, we're, I'm a plumber, I show up, I do my job and I leave. You yeah. never know what is going to, how it's going to turn out, how it's going to hit, how it's going to affect people. And so it's, to be here right now as a direct result of that is outstanding. And I have so many people that come up and with all the merch and they really dig it or they tell me, I get, I get this a lot, like, oh, I watched this, I watched this movie with my dad or this really, you know, I don't get along with my, with my dad so much, but we, we bond over this. It blows my mind, man. It, it, it's, it feels great to be in the zeitgeist. Is that the right word for something like this? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, because I'm, I'm a fan of things, and yeah. I understand what it's like as a fan, and, and to be part of something, is, it's, it's humbling. It's really, it's really awesome. Yeah. It's also pretty cool to see all the cosplay that comes on. Yes, I oh, yeah. love it. A lot of Max and Roxanne yeah. cosplay. We had a Max, Roxanne, and a PJ. Uh, oh, on a, on a side note, with your, your shirt, Lester's Possum Mark, that was my favorite part of the movie. I love I that I love that, scene. too. <laughs> that was my favorite. I yeah. got to work with uh, Pat Buttram, yes. who was, it was, I think, his last That's movie. Right. Yeah. He played, all he said was, here it is, and hit the, <laughs> hit the thing. And he was great, because he was one of those character actors, had a voice like that, and he was a great old guy. So I got to sit around an hour with him talking before we went in the studio. And so that was a, a big uh, memory from that movie, and I love the possum that was had a lot of neat uh, uh, emotion in it too <laughs> yes, it because did. you know that's when yeah max was really being crappy to goofy yes, you know? <laughs> and goofy's just going nuts with you know, his element come on here's a possum you know and all that stuff and the 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 possum mascot that comes up to max who's your favorite possum that was the director of the movie kevin, kevin lima, lima that yeah. voiced that oh. yeah that was his voice yeah <laughs> cool. thank, thank you, you so well, much all these questions are bringing up stuff yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello, lovely. Hello. Hi. Oh, see, she got it. Yeah, She's, she, yeah, yeah I've she been got it. I've theater for like 20 years. There you go. Nice. <laughs> I don't look like it, though. Damn. I thought she was going to bust down the song. You yeah, see the way seriously. she like, took that mic? It's like Actually, a star is born. Um, I, <laughs> What's your name? My name is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. And um, the movie has a lot of very... It, Number one, it's very underrated as far as like Disney movies are concerned. Oh, oh. Thanks. thanks. Thank you. Um, I actually had an earworm of Lester's Possum Park theme song, like, mm-hmm. woke up this morning. Oh, yeah. Like, Lester's Possum With a Park. cheap little, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so in this day and age, if Max and Goofy were to be, you know, living today, what music would Max be listening to? Oh, and good what question. iconic. Um, um, like, you know, he was listening to High Hubs with, in the yeah. car. Um, would he be listening to the same thing if they were to go on a road trip today? He'd probably still be playing an eight track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> He'd probably have the same old tape. Yeah. Oh, I hope. Which I thought was such a clever thing. It wasn't even the Frank Sinatra one, it was like the knockoff, yeah. you know? <laughs> Children's choir. <laughs> I think Max might have, like, I think he would have softened a little bit and, and you know, uh, maybe would have gone to some flea markets, got some old A-tracks, and like, Dad, I brought the Bee Gees. You know, we'll listen to the some Bee of the... Bee Gees? I love the Bee Gees. They did uh, Staying Alive at the... Yes. Netflix. Yeah. Oh, that... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a good question. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, Goofy, would be he'd have his old eight-track case and, you know... Or here's Tommy James and the Sean Dales. I love that. You know. So Max would probably do like a whole like a millennial thing. Like, look at this retro thing. It, he, he'd probably do that. Yeah, he'd probably yeah. be into like Foo Fighters as well, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, Avid Brothers, you know, maybe go in the Americana route to try to please his dad so they can go to like 
All those fests. Oh, down. the Oak Ridge boys. That's who you want. All right. Yeah, Elvira, <laughs> Dad. All right. I used to have a poster of Elvira in my room. I think we all did. <laughs> Which isn't a bad poster. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so You're much, welcome. Sarah. Thank You're you. lovely. Bill, if Goofy and Max were going on another road trip, kind of piggybacking off this question, where do you think they'd be going? You know? Well, probably well, use a GPS be, this yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, he'd, yeah, but Goofy couldn't figure that out. So, yeah. <laughs> he'd still have the map. He'd have to have a little Thomas Brothers guide or whatever. And, hmm, how's this there GPS filler working? <laughs> Why are we in a ditch? <laughs> That'd be kind of awesome to see Goofy with Siri. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man, Disney, if you're listening. Hey, there's this girl <laughs> keeps talking to me. <laughs> What's your name? Hi, I'm Jack. Hi. I'm doing it. Oh, wow. Very good. So my question's a little bit unusual, but this is a father-son story. Yeah. And... It's very much about how your headspace is when you're a teenager versus your dad. So I'm curious, have either of you given any thought to how goofy might have been as a teenager? Mm. That's a good question. What do you think? What do you think? I think I don't know why Eddie Deason pops into my head (laughs) right now. Uh, uh, Yeah, he would. uh, That's a good question. I don't know. I'll bet he'd be so, like, I bet he'd be like, he'd be so, because he'd be. Goofy's always been his authentic self. Yeah, he would be himself. He would, definitely, he would definitely have a crew of. He would probably be perfect for like the, like a convention. Yeah, like if there was those around, he'd be like the the. Oh, he'd be building little models yeah. and stuff in his room, and look what I made. What is it? You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the ball of wax. You know, who knows? Would he be in a band? He would, would play, yeah. Play he'd, be, like, he'd be, play a kazoo. Yeah. <laughs> he'd probably play a little do do. You know, that's the easiest thing I could think yeah, of. Yeah. He'd have trouble with that, you know, a <laughs> stringed instrument or something. We got one string, you know, yeah. bing, that's it. <laughs> good question, good question. No matter what, I'm sure that his goof troop very much appreciated him. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank Jack. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Last question. Hi. Step right up. Hello, hello. Hello again, you two. Hello again, lovely. Okay. What's your name? Oh, my name is Eleanor. Hello. Hi. Okay, my question for the both of you is... What is your favorite line to do from the Goofy movie? Um, favorite line to do? It would be probably what I said earlier, you know, how many cups of sugar does it take to get to the moon? You know, that's my favorite. I don't know why. It's so random. I love that. <laughs> my favorite line is one of Goofy's lines. It, it's so, it gets me every time, but just after the, the Nobody Else But You song and everything's calm and, and, and they're headed for a waterfall and Goofy just goes, Oh, waterfall. Waterfall? (laughs) (laughs) Those are are them right there. What's your favorite line? I don't know. I've I've heard, I've watched a little bit of the movie, but I don't remember. I'm Mm -hmm. sorry. That's fine. I'm sorry. Your new favorite line is waterfall. Waterfall? (laughs) (laughs) Now, what what, what do we say? uh, uh, Let's do the bombo, not like Xavier Cougat, you know, or something like that (laughs) at the beginning. I'm trying to remember. What was your favorite song in the movie? My yeah. favorite song, just... I guess. Oh, I've never fully watched the movie, but after hearing the songs, I guess, Stand Out. Yeah, Stand, Stand Out's out. a great song. Mm-hmm. And it's there's a, a guy online that, like, redid the whole, yeah, whole thing shot by shot. Mm-hmm. And he came to a con once, and I got Did to he? meet him. Yeah. But it's absolutely amazing if you haven't seen it. And I don't know what you'd call it, but it's the opening scene, you know, uh, and, yeah, he found all locations, shot it, and had, like, a split After screen. After today. After today. Yes. Yeah. And did it shot by shot. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. If you can find that online, it's really worth watching. Mm. Cool. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. So now a question for me is, you know, I grew up in a uh, single-parent household, so it was kind of cool to... Um, really get along with them, the whole theme of the movie. How did this movie kind of make you get a closer like relationship with your father? Um, well, my dad passed away, unfortunately, way back in 1972 when I was uh, only a teenager. Mm-hmm. So, And he never got to see all of this fun stuff. But uh, my mom 
definitely, yeah, it makes you appreciate your parents a little bit more, that they go through the same kind of things that you go through, and that they're people too. And I think that's one of the big things that uh, I got out of it. I think it affected my son a little bit because, uh, you know, he uh, has grown up in this weird business with me. He thinks doing voiceover is normal, you know. <laughs> he, uh, we were visiting his grandfather in Florida who was going off to his job and said, well, Austin, I've got to go off to work. And he said, well, what voice do you do? <laughs> it's like, this is normal? No. Yeah, yeah. So he's a Hollywood kid anyway. So, but, uh, Austin told me one time, he was like, yeah, you know, kids at school talk about like movie stars, and I'd bring up like Vincent Price, and none of the kids knew who that was. Yeah. But he learned that, for, learned that from you. Oh, yeah. I, I made him watch the old classic oh, black and white yep. movies and stuff, mm -hmm. and so he's got a pretty good, uh, you know, sense of uh, history and film. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it definitely... I, I, for me, my dynamic was a little different, but but I it definitely uh, had me thinking about in the future. You know, what kind of dad would I be like? You know, what kind of yeah. relationship would I want? And you know, uh, you know, would I have a Max? You know, or would I have you know uh, someone a little kinder to her? <laughs> <laughs> dad, I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't mean to. It was just puberty. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you have to? Be? You have nothing to be sorry about. See, this oh, is how great he is. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he'd be happy. <laughs> Oh. All right, we're going to start to wrap this panel up. It's been so fun getting to hear from the two of you. Do you Thank have any you. fun stories that you'd like to kind of end with? Some stuff from maybe recording or kind of the aftermath of that? Oh, my gosh. Just in, recording in general is so much fun because uh, the actor... Depending on the director, the actor gets to input more. Some people, uh, some directors want you to do it exactly as it's scripted and not stray from that at all. Other actors or directors let you play with it a little bit. I love those kind of uh, uh, directors more. They let the mm -hmm. actor bring what he brings to the table. And if it makes the project better, fine, they keep it in. If not, they don't. Uh, playing in the uh, recording sessions is an awful lot of fun. Uh, um, I used to work with uh, Rusi Taylor and Wayne Allwine, who were the voices of Mickey and Minnie, for the first 25 years of me doing this voice. And unlike any other studio, Disney is like a family. I do feel like Jason is not just another actor. He's like part of my family. He is, he is like another son. Wayne and Rusi were like brother and sister. Uh, you know, uh, Brett Iwan, the voice of Mickey Mouse, is in our audience today. And uh, he's like a brother. We've been hanging around. It's like a family, and it's unlike any other studio I've worked with in uh, the last 30 some years. And there's so many friends over at Disney and people that I love. It really is unlike any other studio. And I'm just very honored to be able to. Uh, you know, count them as friends and, and family. That's that's kind of an interesting thing, and I'm so lucky to be a part of it. Yeah, same. Uh, uh, every session's so different, and, and, you know, I'm working with people that I used to listen to when I was a kid, uh, you know, like Frank Welker and Rob Paulson and Tress McNeil and Bill Farmer and, uh, and, and Rusi, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thrill, and just to see how they are is... You know, as uh, as real real life uh, people, um, it's a kick, man. Uh, a lot of stuff. I mean, all the stories I'm thinking about are so inappropriate because, like, <laughs> a lot of a lot of voice actors I know are very like behind. When you're in a group and it gets very, it, sometimes it gets very punchy and 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 uh, a lot of inappropriate jokes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I remember one time Jim Cummings and. Uh, and uh, Kevin Michael Richardson doing like dueling Mike Tyson impressions. <laughs> um, I mean, it, yeah, just crazy, crazy stuff like that. Uh, and uh, we got to go to Disney World one time. Mm -hmm. to, sometimes the perks are you get to they fly out to uh, to help promote a uh, an event. So we went to they invited us to to open the a ride at Walt Disney World, and we were doing interviews and and. Uh, and I remember seeing Wayne and Rusi, uh, I never saw them work together before. And you know, for those of you who don't know, Wayne uh, and Rusi were married in real life. Mickey and Minnie were married in real life. And they were adorable. They were so, like, you know those people that are so in love and they're touching each other and they're just disgusting. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> that was them. And they, like, they had their whole thing, like, they had their whole thing down when they were on, when they were doing the interviews and they were as, they had to stay in character. And Wayne always brought a ukulele with him. 
and they had these pre-rehearsed little things. I can imagine them doing like in their living room, like, hey, we should do this. We're going to go over there. And, and uh, mm. it, it would, they would form these characters, and it made, it made sense like why they were doing what they, what they were doing. Um, so being part of those experiences was a joy. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you know, getting thrown, flown around like rock stars and coming oh, to Sacramento. Yeah. That, that, yeah. And, uh, but it's a very tough, for anyone that wants to get into voiceover, it's a very tough business because there's like 150,000 Screen Actors Guild members in L.A. Mm. And on any given week, there's like 10, 15,000 jobs. So if you do the match math, there's a lot of out-of-work actors on any given week. So it's very competitive. But once you get the job, it's, it's a blast. Yeah. So, you know, it's very difficult to, in some ways, but a lot of joy is involved in it as well. Indeed. Sweet. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. A uh, round of applause for Gosh, Jason Marzen and Bill Farmer, guys. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Oh, yep. A little louder.